Welcome back to another video. Today I'll show you how I built this custom enclosure for my Atomstack A5 M50 Pro laser. This isn't going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial as such. I'll just show you what I've built and what tools and materials I used to build it. So let's get started. This is my laser engraver and to decide on the measurements required for the enclosure I simply measured up the size of my machine allowing clearance for the gantry height and the XY travel. I've since recreated this enclosure in Fusion 360 to give you a better idea of how it all fits together. It's nothing complicated but I find these visualizations to be extremely useful. The files for this will be available over on my website. The sheet material I used for this build was 11mm OSB. A sheet size of 8 foot by 4 foot should more than cover you for what you need. You can also use other woods, I just happen to have this lying around after I built my workshop. You'll also need some 3mm perspex sheet. It's worth noting that if your eyes are exposed to the laser, you might want to get some OD3 laser shielding. It'll just save you having to wear eye protection every time you look at the enclosure from the outside. My particular laser has this guard on it anyway, so I didn't have to worry about that. To build something like this, you don't need anything too fancy when it comes to tools. I used a power drill, a tape measure, a jigsaw, a table saw, a cork gun, and a hole cutting bit. That being said, there's nothing stopping you doing this with basic tools if you're patient and you put your mind to it. In regards to materials, you will either need some wood filler or some general purpose silicone, some 20 mil M4 screws, rubber window seal, and these latch clamps. When it comes to cutting your panels, if you've got a decent sized table saw, this should be relatively easy. However, not everybody does, and I managed to do this using a jigsaw. One tip is to use other pieces of wood as a guide, or in my case, I was just able to clamp down some of this old 2020 extrusion that I just had lying around the workshop. After carefully measuring each side of the board, you can use that guide and easily cut through your material. When you're done, you can also sand the material down if you have a sander, or you can do it by hand. This will really make for a cleaner finish on the enclosure. Panel assembly is relatively straightforward and you can always use the Fusion 360 project as a reference. Always remember to drill pilot holes, particularly if you're using OSB or ply, as the edges can split very easily. The screws I used for assembly were M4 size at a length of 20 millimeters. A critical step to making your enclosure airtight is to ensure you seal all the joints with either a wood filler or any generic silicone. It doesn't have to be a fancy or a pretty job, as long as it's been sealed, that's all you want. With the enclosure assembled, now might be a great opportunity to drill out holes for the ventilation and the wiring. These holes can also be sealed with silicone later on, and I even secured mine with a standard electrical gland, which stops the cable from pulling back and forth. If you can't buy the acrylic sheet at the exact size you need, cutting it down to size is also an option. I highly recommend a table saw for this as it allows for a much cleaner cut with a much lower risk of cracking. Make sure you allow for about an inch or two of an offset so that you can secure the acrylic to the enclosure and have a better seal. When installing the acrylic to the enclosure, I recommend bolting it on with a tight silicone seal behind it. Once again, the silicone creates an airtight seal, preventing any fumes from escaping. I used M4 cap head bolts to do this, and remember, don't over tighten them as the bolts could crack the acrylic. To install the lid, I used three of these generic hinges. When installing the hinges, you'll have to tap out a recess into the top edge surface. This ensures that you have a flush seal when the lid is closed. One of the most important elements is the seal between the lid and the enclosure. I did initially try using foam for this, but it didn't work very well. My recommendation would be to use rubber window seal. This is used to prevent drafts on UPVC doors and windows, and if it's good enough to keep the elements away, then it'll certainly be fine for keeping the laser fumes in. Keep in mind that this is also likely to be a serviceable part, so keep some lying around and you can replace it in the future if necessary. In order for the rubber seal to be effective, the lid needs to be able to squeeze down tightly against it. I achieved this using some simple stainless steel latch clamps. I installed three on the front and two on each side. This was sufficient for me, but you may want to add more if your enclosure is bigger. Next up, I needed a way to extract the fumes out of the enclosure and ultimately out of my workshop. I printed this outlet that could attach to a 24 volt 92 millimeter PC fan. The fan is powered by this 24 volt transformer that has a direct terminal attachment for wiring bare cables. The fan then extracts the fumes out of the enclosure through some 100 millimeter PVC ducting hose 
and out of my workshop through this hooded vent. My advice would be to keep the fan inside of the enclosure and have the wire exit the enclosure through its own dedicated hole. Initially, I tried installing the entire unit outside of the enclosure. However, this led to leaks from the fan where the cable from the motor exits the fan chassis. Remember to also use silicone to seal up the gaps between the outlet and the enclosure. One thing I will add is that lasers generally get very dirty. If your machine is in use every single day, then you'll find yourself having to do enclosure maintenance at least once a week. So there we go. Overall, I'm extremely pleased with the laser. It works exactly as intended and it was much cheaper than buying something off the shelf. Plus, more importantly, when you build something like this, you're gaining valuable DIY experience. Remember, you can follow this process whether your enclosure is bigger or smaller than mine. Just adjust your cut sizes to fit your machine and everything else is the same. If you've built an enclosure and you think I can improve mine, please let me know. I'm always looking to improve my designs and have a better system. If you've got any questions, please leave me a comment down below. But other than that, as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something and I'll see you in another video. Take care.